Hey everyone, how's it going? Matthew Kadish here, author of the Earthman Jack Space Saga, available over on Amazon, so go check it out when you get a chance. Uh, today, we are going to be talking about Mad Max, and uh, basically, news has just broke that uh, now that the legal issues are clearing up with that franchise, it looks like uh, creator and director George Miller is going to be making at least three sequels to Mad Max Fury Road. Uh, well, sequels slash spinoffs, as, as we'll get into in this article. Now, it um, might be interesting to note that basically uh, Mad Max Fury Road took 15 years to get made. And when it did finally hit the theaters, it was a huge hit. It was It's considered, widely considered to be one of the best action movies ever. Um, it was just brilliantly done. It, it, it looked gorgeous. It was a, a really fun movie to watch. Um, it, Kind of like a whole new take on on the Mad Max series, but also a continuation. Uh, so it was just it, it was cool. It was, it was a, a good little movie, and it made a, a bunch ton of money, and then nothing. Like you would think that they that Warner Brothers would have been on the uh, the sequel train right away. You know, getting get ready to do this stuff. I mean, um, director George Miller, he's seventy four years old, so he's not getting any younger. Um, you'd think that they'd want to kind of get a sequel to this thing out right away but the thing is is that there was a um, lawsuit that occurred that really kind of gummed up the works and we're going to talk about that here in a little bit but first I want to cover this article that kind of goes through what the sequel plans are now that it looks like the lawsuit stuff is getting ready to be cleared up. George Miller returned to the world of Mad Max back in 2015 with Mad Max Fury Road, an all-time great action film that cast Tom Hardy in the role of Max Rockintansky. Rockintansky, however you pronounce it. I didn't even know Mad Max had a last name. Oh well. And introduced a brand new franchise icon with Charlize Theron's Furiosa. The film grossed nearly $400 million worldwide at the box office and won six Oscars while also scoring rave reviews nearly across the entire board. For my money, Fury Road is indeed a towering achievement in action cinema and one of the wildest, most awe-inspiring films to come along in my entire lifetime. Well, uh, that's a little bit grandiose there, buddy, but okay. So where's the sequel, you ask? Well, it sounds like Miller actually plans on making a few follow-ups to Fury Road, and he updates all that in a chat with IndieWire this week. George Miller says... There are two stories, both involving Mad Max and also a Furiosa story, Miller told the site. We're still solving. We've still got to play out the Warners thing. But he added, it seems to be pretty clear that it's going to happen. Long story short, the Warners thing Miller refers to is the legal battle between his company and Warner Brothers, which had put the franchise's future in jeopardy for a time. Uh, It all started because of the chaos at Warner Brothers and not Kevin Tujahara. It was pre-all that, Miller explained in the new chat with IndieWire. He wasn't the antagonist because a lot of people didn't know what was going on and were not prepared to make a definitive stand. Everybody was running around fearful, it seems, through three regimes. It was hard to get anyone's attention, so we went to litigation. The chaos has stabilized and it's become extremely positive as as the dust seems to have settled after the AT&T merger. Now that the legal issues are being worked out, it sounds like Max and Furiosa Furiosa will soon return to write again historically on Fury Road. Potentially three sequels are on the way. So uh, for those of you who don't know, AT&T ended up uh, buying out Warner Brothers. uh, So there was a lot of kind of stuff that was up in the air while that merger was going through. And while that merger was going through, there was uh, this stuff uh, about the lawsuit that was happening. And basically, uh, the long and short of this is, I'm not going to go through this entire article, but um, there was an agreement between uh, Warner Brothers and um, Miller's production company that said that they would get paid a, a bonus for bringing the movie in under budget. So basically the bonus was something like $9 million. Uh, they um, had a budget of $157 million, and Miller claimed that they brought in the movie at $154.6 million. However, Warner Brothers said that the movie actually cost $185.1 million and that they were not entitled to those reshoots. 
or to, to that bonus. And basically, uh, Warner said that they spent $30 million on reshoots after the movie had finished, and that added to the total, but the agreement never s- explicitly stated that uh, that reshoots would be uh, credited towards the actual film's budget, because that was stuff that was agreed upon after the movie was shot. So basically, it came down to uh, Miller's production company saying, you guys owe us $9 million, and... Uh, Warner Brothers saying, like, no, we already gave you $30 million for reshoots. We're not giving you any more money. Uh, But in addition to that, there was an issue where uh, when it came down to uh, financing those reshoots, uh, Miller's company said that that they were not given the option to finance those things themselves uh, or to find financing themselves first, and that um, Warner Brothers went to... Uh, Brett Ratner's production company, Rat Pack uh, Entertainment, and got them to finance uh, the reshoots. And so um, because Warner Brothers did it this way, then um, it kind of messed up something with the contract. So that was another part of the dispute there. And it was just a a, a big mess. And apparently while this was going on, um, there was this whole kerfluffle with Kevin Tujahara in the sense that, uh, you know, at the time he was the CEO of Warner Brothers and he got involved in the Me Too, uh, Time's Up, uh, sexual harassment scandal. And so there was a lot of chaos going on with the people who ran the studio. And that chaos just kind of translated into, uh, you know, this lawsuit going forward. And another funny thing was, is that because, um, you know, George Miller is based out of uh, Australia, they were trying to take it through the Australian courts and Warner Brothers was like, no, 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 you got to do it here in California. And they're like, no, 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 we got to do it over here in Australia. So there was some jurisdictional stuff going on there as well that just kind of all coalesced in, into creating a, a big mess. And that's one of the reasons why we haven't seen or heard anything about a sequel to Mad Max Fury Road since it came out in 2015, which is, uh, you know, four years ago as of this recording. So uh, that was kind of the breakdown of the, the legal hurdles that were going on. And now we're going to talk about uh, uh, this article in Geek Tyrant, which kind of covers the same thing about the sequels, but gives us a little bit more uh, different perspective here. This article reads, It's been a long time since we've had any kind of update on the sequel that George Miller has been developing for Mad Max Fury Road. It's been so long that I wasn't sure if the films would ever get made. Well, Miller confirmed in an interview with IndieWire that these sequels were going to happen and that those films would focus on Mad Max and Furiosa. Miller says, There are two stories, both involving Max and Furiosa. And uh, we talked about this in the other article. Uh, Then when we get down here, uh, we have more quotes where Miller says, Yeah, regarding Furiosa, she's a pretty compelling character, so it would be great to tell her story. Her backstory is really interesting. We only allude to it in this movie because the movie is on the run. People don't have much time for recreational talk. But you pick up, you have a sense of her having gone through stuff. That's what the film is trying to do. You're trying to put a lot of iceberg under the tip, I like saying. One of the things that's really gratifying, people are reading the film more than just the surface. The events of the movie and picking up a lot of stuff underneath it, which is very deliberate. So in many ways, the audience is picking up a lot about Furiosa or enough to intrigue. And she's got an interesting story. So this is kind of a hint at the the Furiosa movie where, you know, Miller might, you know, show her, uh, you know, uh, as a younger character where she loses her arm or it might be a continuing adventure of hers. But he definitely has uh, some backstory to her kind of fleshed out that he thinks would make an interesting movie. Miller goes on to talk about other characters in the story, saying that each one of them could basically have their own movie, and then focuses his attention on the doof warrior. (laughs) I could tell the stories of every character in the story. I could tell the story of the guitar and the doof warrior. I can tell the story of how his guitar was made and how he survived, effectively a blind guitarist who can only speak through the guitar and really how he survived the apocalypse and how he got to be basically working for Immorton's army and so on. Everything has to have a backstory. So, you know, one of the great things about George Miller is that he just has this wonderful imagination. And and in this world, like if you look at the Mad Max movies, they're, they're fairly light on story and characterization and stuff like that. But there's a lot of subtext there. And it feels like George Miller is the type of guy who knows in detail all the background about his characters and his world that he's created. And he doesn't feel the need to 
just come out and share all of that at once. He kind of layers it in there. And so like, there's a lot of room to kind of like speculate and think about, you know, these movies after you see them. But obviously I'd love to see more Mad Max movies. I'd love to see a Furiosa movie. I would love to just see Frank or George Miller uh, make more movies in general because, you know, it took him 15 years to make Fury Road. And then he's had a four year hiatus on uh, a sequel of this stuff. And he, he, like, like I said, he's almost 75 years old. So, you know, uh, the, the, um, trials and tribulations of doing a production, the stress of doing a production, uh, is, is going to get harder and harder on him as he gets older. So hopefully he, he'll be able to make at least one more sequel, um, before he decides to kind of hang up his director's hat. Ideally, I'd love to see three sequels and you know what? heck give us an hbo max series on mad max you know like like let's let's see warner brothers do something with this property once it gets all of its uh legalities cleared up because i think mad max is a good potential franchise fair and uh we'd love to see tom hardy you know pick up the role again and uh see what Charlize theron has to do with furiosa what do you guys think about this? Are you a Mad Max fan? Would you like to see more sequels? What would you like to see in the sequels? Let me know in the comments section and please subscribe to my channel if you like what I have to say. This is Matthew Kadish and I will catch you guys next time.